So first I would like to ask for your both permission to use this video for educational purpose and on the internet. You may. Sure, sure. Thank you. You're yourself a doctor. Yes. Tell me, tell me about what kind of doctor are you and... and I'm originally a board certified pathologist, but for the p past 15 years I've practiced emergency medicine. So you understand all the details of what's going on with you very well. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what happened? What, what was the situation before you and I met? I just accidentally fell, and I fell straight down, mm -hmm. typical axial load. I walked on it for probably three, four, what, three, four days. Well, oh, even longer. Even I would say, well, yeah. Thinking we, it was a bruise or mm -hmm. a pulled muscle or something. And then I realized this was going more than that. Yeah. And so, that's so and I remember I saw you first. You said you are going to get some thumbs, and we did get those thumbs. So your problem wasn't a bruise. Do you remember what the problem was? What was the problem? L2 crushed and yeah. disgraced. You had a very complex L2 compression fracture. Mm -hmm. The part of the bone, what we call extruded from the bone area, intruded into the spinal canal. So you had a severe stenosis, yeah. severe this disease, obviously above and below uh, the damage, and spinal you know, uh, instability, actually. Right. I remember that as soon as we saw the pictures, I put you in a brace right away, mm -hmm. and we started the process to stabilize you. But uh, how were you clinically doing? I, I remember you were losing function pretty rapidly just well, that you know, I had some weakness and you know not to embarrass anybody it's an mm -hmm. emergency. Yeah, yeah, but no, this is a medical situation. Right. Yeah. So we kind and, of totally uh, talk about it. Um, other than that, you know, and then I just I couldn't really walk very well. Yeah. So walking was difficult, you were having progressive weakness and these are as you know all alarm sign Exactly. Impending kind of complete neurological damage. Yeah. And the, in all classification, the rapid progressive uh, loss of function. And it was a, getting progressively yeah. pretty steady. Now, we got the medical clearance as good as we could, and that was my goal to get a rapid, good medical clearance. But you have some other medical problems. Tell me about what were those medical problems that we have to deal with? Well, um, yeah, it's no secret. I've got chronic liver disease, had mm -hmm. it since diagnosed in 1980. Okay. Never been symptomatic. I've seen a couple of gastroenterologists mm -hmm. test well, but negative. Uh, the consequence of the liver disease is coagulopathy, meaning our blood yeah, doesn't exactly. coagulate as well. Exactly. And, the, the and, and that's, that's why in my INR was going around too. Yeah, actually it was right before the surgery, we corrected as well as we could, it was 1.6 and your platelets count was very low, it was 45,000 and uh, obviously that is a, a significant medical situation that um, we like for the blood uh, you know, coagulopathy be corrected and you know for the um, INR to be normal and for the platelets to be at least about 100,000 before we do any kind of surgery, but yeah. we were losing function. We were in that uh, situation. We have to see, do we wait and just uh, accept that you are going to have permanent deficit, or should we do a surgery and put you at the significant risk yeah, of bleeding? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you were losing function. You wanted to take the risk, but uh, the open surgery, uh, I don't believe any reasonable surgeon would have offered mm -hmm. you open mm -hmm. spine surgery. That wouldn't be just taking the rest. That is like literally breathing out yeah. in the war because yeah, no, I've, I've seen that. I've yeah. seen yeah. And you know, if you want to quickly look at here, you have the complex uh, L2 fracture. Part of it was going out in an open old-fashioned surgery. We would take the bad disc out, bad bone out. Mm -hmm. We call it a corpectomy. Even if we, uh, um, in the best of situation with the best of medical status, doing a corpectomy by itself is somewhere between one and two liter, 1,000 to 2,000 cc of blood loss. Okay. In your situation with your low oh platelets counts and you know, with the coagulopathy, we are talking about somewhere significant, like um, replacing your blood in your body two or three times. Right. If in your situation we would have done, that I is a- You know, and probably six weeks before I saw you, mm -hmm. 
you know, earlier last year, I had seen an orthopedist in Fargo because I mm -hmm. thought, you know, I needed my knees replaced, which I quite do with bone on bone. But um, uh, he didn't want to do it because low Same pelvis. trauma. And, uh, Same trauma. Um, and I had, was working on an appointment with a, um, an oncologist I know in Fargo, yeah. you know, but he was in between clinics. And yeah, and you know, we surgeons are reasonable, we doctors are reasonable, we weigh risk versus benefit. And for a long time, in your situation that you had, it was, uh, do, do we put you at the risk of uh, dying, bleeding out in the surgery, or uh, accept yeah. that you're going to be paralyzed? And almost every surgeon, reasonable surgeon or anesthesiologist say, okay, if being paralyzed is better than bleeding out on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you had no option uh, with the open surgery. And you know, and the anesthesiologists that they came in and talked to you as well right. about that, Remember what I he told you? So I tell me what did he? He is a reasonable person, yeah. but he's used to open surgery. He knows only open <laughs> spine surgery. What did he tell you? What do you remember? Well, that uh, that it, he was reticent because of the low platelets and yeah. high. Uh, he said he's not going to do the surgery. He, yeah. The end. Yeah. yeah. No, he, he, because you will bleed out. You will die of that surgery. But then at the end, he said, "Well, you know, as long as I have." I said, but no, but the idea was that he and I, we talked, mm -hmm. and we said, listen, um, he, I understand where he comes from, but uh, my usual blood loss for a four-level fusion, that's what you got, is usually 150 cc, and if we quadruple that even, your blood loss would be s about 600 cc, which is totally acceptable in any situation, yeah. and guess what, our blood loss was 620 mm -hmm. cc, exactly what I... We expect that your surgery was literally, we did it under, under about one and a half hour. Oh, okay. And that was sort of different situation yep. than doing open old fashioned surgery, which is an eight hour surgery and twice or three times replacing your body blood. Yeah. So for the first time, we have an option in a situation yeah. like yours, where we didn't have any option in a situation, yeah. obviously, for even people who don't have your situation, you know, it's better mm -hmm. to lose less blood and faster surgery, but in your situation, the open surgery wasn't even an option. And we gave right. you an option, and um, I had to really fight to get your surgery done. Because oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to I convince them that, you know, with our surgery, with our all the procedure, this is a reasonable, you, this is a doable process. And tell me, how have you been doing since the surgery? Real well, you know, I guess if there's anything I would like to be moving faster you mm -hmm. know, in terms of walking. But you're walking now yeah. with some limitation obviously. We are just and four weeks after the surgery, the, right? The PT people say mm -hmm. I'm doing fine, you know, yeah. that it has expected. So we are regaining the function back yeah. with the minimal invasive surgery and so on. Now, um, obviously, you know, the, the still healing is still going to be ongoing. Another thing that you know that, that the many of my colleagues, neurosurgical colleagues, are going to point out is there is a piece of bone pushing on the spine. You should want to do the surgery, right? You should go literally do the corpectomy, drill that bone out, and open up the space, and that is the part that you would be losing a lot of blood. Yeah. And I have now now a handful of patients in your situation where because of the age, because of the medical situation, that's not an option. What we have done, we have done our, what we call indirect decompression and stabilization. And you among all the other people we have done is that you, we really don't have to do that. We don't have to drill on the bone and open up the pores of the bone and cause like gallons of gallons of blood loss yeah. to get the job done. So, so absorbed. And one of the signs of adequate decompression is walking, the spinal cord yeah. The other sign of that it's working is that the leg pain goes away. How is the leg pain? It's none. Gone. Gone. Good. Good. So, and you see, this is again, you know, that's a good sign that I can show to my colleagues as well as to everybody involved that um, the stabilization and what we call anatomic alignment and decompression is actually enough. We don't have to do that horrendous. And this is a horrendous surgery. You have to cut you from one side of the belly to another. Literally drill out that broken bone and take it piece by piece out. Mm -hmm. And that is where most of the blood loss is. And put a something cage that expands from end plate to end plate. 
obviously that remains uh, you know yeah. of, of the standard of care but in certain situation I don't believe that it's really justified and because the threshold of doing that horrendous surgery is so high I think most of my colleagues wouldn't really give you the option of the surgery which is the right thing but the only difference is that we had another option right so from what you saw with him before the surgery and after the surgery what's your observation it it really made a difference i think both of us um can tell and especially now you know the first couple of weeks were a little bit he was i think you were a little bit nervous mm -hmm. about a lot of it but now that you're gaining some more confidence mm -hmm. and the pain is totally different and yeah. even things I like had a transfer from yeah. Yeah. yeah even getting you know yeah, up and I, taking I a shower and, shower and, and you know what should i tell you about that is that what you're describing how you look like you look like somebody after open surgery after six to nine months after surgery and we are only four weeks four, after exactly. our surgery oh no and now it's really making some good yeah. progress i've noticed especially after the last well, I told you after the last week and a half or two weeks that the pain has really diminished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's hurting now because I've been sitting here for yeah. a while. Yeah. But you know, I'm uh, I'm very optimistic. We are going to get most of the function back. Yeah, I think so. And uh, obviously, you know that uh, it's going to take time. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, you know what we have achieved yeah. with this limited, minimal invasive procedure. And I think, uh, you know, that I'm just looking up to uh, get better and better in the next few months and Good. regain most of the function, actually. Good. And it certainly seems like we're on the right track. Yeah. And yeah. I think both of us want it to go faster, but yeah. you don't realize how extensive we're both it is. That, yeah. We're both pretty type A, yeah. but... <laughs> no, the, the, the fact is that you know you went home a few days after the surgery. Yeah. You would be after open surgery, most likely you would be still in an acute hospital. Probably if you have that much of blood loss, as you know, when you lose more than two uh, thousand cc of blood, you go to certain kind of medical situation that your coagulation doesn't work. We have to give you factors and so on. There's a good chance. I would have done that. You would have been like for half a month or a month in an ICU. Exactly. Just after open surgery. So you are just one month, you went home and you know, you are coming back after, I think, uh, you know, yeah. this is pretty good what we have achieved so far. Yeah, He's pleased, okay. I'm pleased. Excellent, so thank you so much for the interview, okay? Thank, thank you. you.